So Jody's giving the bike a, a quick once over. Total price, four thirty four seventy nine. The derailleur hanger broke off. All right, guys, Josh here again with Daily Mountain Bike Rider, and we're back with the Nishiki Colorado 27.5 Plus. It's time to go to Dick's because the rear derailleur hanger broke. The fork isn't really working, and my hope is to get an exchange so I can put this bike under normal testing and show you guys how it operates. Let's get going. Taking the freeway, going back to Dick's. We're back. Back to the mountain bike promised land. Dick's Sporting Goods. Ah, Dick's. When I think of mountain biking, I just think of you. I don't know, guys. Part of me just feels ashamed because I just rode a bike once and I'm returning it. But hey, luckily Dick's loves me. Three hours later. All right, guys, walked in with a used bike, walked out with a new one. And I gotta say, I just had the best Dick Sporting Good experience. Let me tell you about it. I just got the bike loaded up. And like I said, I just had like the best Dick Sporting Good experience. Okay, so um, I go in there and at first they're, they're definitely like a little hesitant. The big thing, and I learned this as I went on, is department stores are catching on to guys buying mountain bikes destroying them and then returning them and especially with a bike that's like five hundred dollars it's just not good anyway so i went in there had to get the manager the manager's like let me let me call the bike tech and i was like i hope i hope it's the guy who helped me originally whose name was jody anyway jody comes out i'm like hey man he's like oh hey and i was like i told him what happened the derailleur broke and the fork isn't working the best and he's like manager he like looks at the manager he's like this is the same thing on all of these colorados and so i was like cool like would you guys be willing to exchange it and so they were like yeah we have this one it just has like a little scratches on it so i walk back i'm talking to jody about it and i'm like okay so here's the deal i don't my goal is not to like make a dick sporting goods pay more money i want the bike to work like i'm curious if it was just like one issue with the derailleur and we talked and it sounds like it could have just been the one that i had that it fell off and so i said well you know what dude like let's exchange it let me try it i really do want this bike to work out i want to pass it on after i'm done with it so then we get to the register and he does the exchange he's like cool everything's taken care of he goes do you want the protection plan and i'm like what's the protection plan? And he's like, well, basically it's like 45 bucks. It was like $51 after tax. And he goes, it's through a third party company. So if anything happens in the next year, you have to take a picture and send it to the company and they'll either give you a brand new bike or they'll send you a check for how much you paid for the bike. And I'm like, be careful what you wish for Dick Sports. Time to get home, set this bike up and go out on another ride. Yo! Meanwhile, all right, so I was on the way home and I was thinking about okay, I have to tighten the bolts and adjust the brakes like I did. Last time I tried to adjust the shifting on my own and I did a terrible job and it was such a pain in the butt to pedal. And then I remembered, always use your local bike shop. So I'm back to my favorite place, Mr. Last Bike Shop. And uh, I'm gonna have Mike shift my gears because I cannot do it well on my own. Mike, get ready to feast your eyes on the nicest piece of biking machinery you've seen all year. So as you guys know, Mike's, Mike's my, my good old trusted mechanic who always takes care of me. So Mike, this bike costs $400, NX drivetrain, plus size tires, mm -hmm. XCM fork, which we know is not the best. It feels okay. Okay, Mike, honesty hour. What, what is your biggest concern? Like, let's say I was a random Joe Schmo, bring this bike, say, hey Mike, can you set this up for me? What am I gonna, what problems am I gonna face if it's my own? Honestly, I don't know, not much. I'd ride it. All right, so Mike just flipped through the gears and Mike, was it pretty, was it set up pretty well for like a Dick Sporting Goods bike? It was pretty impressive for a Dick Sporting Goods bike. I would think that maybe this came from uh, like a chain bike shop. Yeah. Yeah. Would you still encourage people, if they're buying a department store bike because their budget's low, to come get it checked out by a shop? Yes, absolutely. Okay. Like the front axle is loose, but there's always like, Every time I see one of these bikes come in, there's always something different that's like either just adjusted really bad or just loose. Thanks so much. Is this, would you shred this? It's ready to go. Shreddy to go. Yeah. All right, we're gonna get it home. I'm gonna adjust the brakes and then uh, go for a ride, man. Awesome. 
later. All right guys, so I just got done, got my bike all ready to go on the trails. Got the brake style in, made sure they were adjusted so I can actually stop and it's a right one finger position. Um, got the saddle set up, everything's ready to go. So I'm reminding myself to take it easy, not overdo it, not too many jumps. And my goal is I want this bike to work. So this is the first ride of many and brought the helmet cam, so let's get out there. Woo! All right, guys, so we've been climbing out here for a little bit on the Colorado Comp 27.5 Plus. Before I talk about the uh, awesomeness that this bike is, I just gotta say, I ride with these gloves, Tasco gloves, every single ride. Rain or shine, they've got cold weather, they've got warm weather, they got everything weather. Seriously though, great glove company. Click the link down below, get 10% off from them. They're awesome, man, I just love them. The one thing that's coming back to me as I'm climbing this again, is when I was having problems with the seat post, my first ride out here on my last one, and I realized the minimum insertion it keeps the saddle pretty dang low. So definitely need a longer seat post because I feel like I'm on a little kid's bike. Second thing is this bike is so heavy. The NX11 speed drivetrain is great, but man, I'm in those low gears a lot. Anyway, just around the corner, from the jump line, it's gonna go on the blue jump line, keep it easy, and uh, try not to put too much pressure on this bike. Blue jump line, taking it smooth, no need to boost. Smooth, oh that was so smooth. Woo, relax, this is easy. This is what this bike is designed for, taking it smooth. It's a little smooth drop, smooth whip, oh yeah, no problem. Oh yeah. All right, so that jump line was really good. The bike again feels so solid. Just a tiny bit of chain, chain slap, nothing major, but man, I love this bike. $400, you can't do stuff like that consistently for $400. Oh gosh, guys, I'm like a moth drawn to a light bulb. I know this bike isn't designed for black line jumps, but my goal is actually to give this to somebody a uh, high school student I know that I know is gonna put it through the test. So if I can't go on a black jump line on it and be trusted to pass it off to him, then not worth passing over. So, all right, bikey, let's hold up. All right, last time I didn't quite get enough speed to clear a lot of these jumps. So I'm going for smooth, going for speed. Oh yeah, nice and easy. This stem is just so long. Oh yeah. Did not clear that. Cased it very badly, probably got some water in the lens. Okay, gonna go smooth. I got these. Oh yeah, so smooth. Oh, so smooth, so much water. Ah! I got it, oh gosh. Smoother than the first time I did the black line. Guys, I can't deny it. This bike feels so good. I know it's only $400, but it just, it's built well. It has a good bar, good stem. It has a good frame set that's strong. If only that rear derailleur hanger didn't break. And this fork's not the best, but I think I told you guys, I found out at the store, the fork's not the problem, it actually felt the same. It's just very hard to get full travel out of these things, especially with the preload all the way to the plus, which is I, what I use, because I'm a little bit of a bigger guy and I'm doing a lot of jumps and stuff, so. All right, time to go do some trail riding. All right guys, dropping into my final descent, which is on Bob's. Bob's is a trail I think I've shown on the channel a couple times. It's just kind of like a, a blue flowy tech trail. It's got some jumps and drops, like it's very fun. Anyway, it's a good tester for this bike. So when I'm riding this bike or any bike for the first time that I'm like testing, there's a couple of things I'm looking for. I'm looking for riding position. This stem is pretty long, so it puts you pretty far forward over the bike, but you're looking for confidence on steeper sections or over like just chattery roots and bumps. So I'm looking at that. I'm also checking all the components, right? You're thinking about the drivetrain as you're shifting through and when you really need it, the brakes, making sure they're consistent and don't get too hot and fade after a long period of time. I'm thinking about this fork which is a coil 34 millimeter Suntour kind of entry level fork. And I'm really trying to make sure 
is this fork just gonna bottom out and clunk on a big drop or a jump? Is it, you know, gonna have small bump sensitivity? So far it's very stiff, surprisingly stiff actually for the price. And I don't think I bottomed this thing out or had a harsh landing at all. And the descent like this is a really good tester because I'm not taking breaks, I'm just going and letting the fork just go through its travel a ton, letting the brakes get kind of warm on some of these descents and really seeing how this thing's gonna work. But I don't know, man, I just can't complain so far. The biggest issue I have making review videos about a bike like this is the biggest thing I wanna know is the biggest thing you probably wanna know because I'm just like you is longevity, right? For some of you, $400 for a bike, that's a chunk of change for a bike that you may not be riding very much or you're not sure if you're gonna like. And you wanna know, can I ride this thing for 20 times, 30 times, 40 times, you know? And unfortunately, that's a question that like can't be answered in a studio. It's just gotta be answered out here on the trails, riding the bike. All right, that's about it for Bob's. That was a fun ride. Time to get back to the car, the house, and do some thinking and some talking about the bike. <sighs> All right, hey guys, I'm back. It's actually a couple days after I rode my second Colorado comp. I've ridden it two times now. Um, and the whole time I've been riding this bike, I've been thinking to myself, is this a bike worth buying at the price? Would I recommend my viewers and my close friends if they were getting into the sport to buy this bike? And after doing a lot of thinking, I think I've come to an answer. And that answer is yes. I would encourage people if they have a lower price range, about four or $500, if they're newer to the sport and wanting to get into it, or maybe they've been in the sport for a while, but maybe have an older bike and want a one-by drivetrain and, and a bike that can handle a little bit more, I would definitely encourage somebody to go check out the Colorado Comp. I think the three main reasons, number one, the spec for the price is really unbeatable. Just the one-by SRAM NX drivetrain alone makes it worth the price. You get a, a really a decent spring fork, you get a, a frame that's really solidly made, um, and overall I just think the value is there. Number two, and this is what I would be asking, it's like, Josh, the rear derailleur on your first one broke, so you're encouraging somebody to buy a bike that broke on you? My answer is yeah, because when you buy a bike, you're probably gonna ride it a couple times when you first get it out of excitement. And what I found is if something like this happens, I brought the bike back, I think like four weeks later, um, in Dick's Sporting Goods, because I had the receipt, they honored that, hey, they sold a product that wasn't up to par where it should be, um, and they exchanged it. So I totally support them as a big box store for doing the right thing for their customers. Um, and on top of that, now that I have the additional protection, I think that's a great way to go. And number three, and this may not be important to you, but it is to me, is this bike is very easily upgradable and for not a lot of money. It's very easy to put on a shorter stem in different bars on the bike to make it feel a little more modern. You can get some entry level hydraulic brakes like by Shimano for like 35 bucks each. Um, and then even the fork, there are upgrades available. It is a straight one and one quarter steer tube. Some of you will know what that means. Um, so there are some options. It's limited um, because a lot of the new forks have a different kind of steer tube diameter, but uh, the upgrade options are there. And really the frame is good. The components on it are good. And man, overall, I think it's a great value for what you get. But really, you know, that's just me. I would encourage you, go check out your local bike shop, go talk to people in the know on your local trails or in different areas around you and see what they think and see if it would be a good bike for your skill level in your trails. But at the end of the day, really, that is up to you. All right, that's it for me today. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope this was helpful for some of you looking for a new bike or curious if the Colorado Comp at the price is a good bike for you. At the end of the day though, don't spend too much time watching guys on YouTube talk about bikes from Dick's Sporting Goods, but get out there and ride your bike and make sure you do it every day.